Hello, everybody, and welcome back to another Pop Dissected podcast. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about and sharing my process when it comes to making videos, essentially, and what all that entails. So I get a lot of comments every single day about different topics I should cover and different artists that I should look into. Usually, I've been doing this through public polls, but now I let my channel members, hi guys, decide for me. But after I decide on a topic of my own choosing, or there's a poll choice that gets the most votes, it's go time. So usually the first thing I do is type in directly into a search engine what people are suggesting. So for example, for my videos that I do on why an album underperformed or why it didn't do well, I type exactly that into Google. I check out a lot of different things, and I do look at um, forums, you know, places like Reddit, other discussion places where people have talked about an album. I see their personal take on it, why they believe an album didn't do well, why it didn't live up to the hype. And then I just really research the album, and I read about the one that came before it, its developmental history, I read different interviews, I watch different interviews, which are a lot harder to cite because you can't always put interviews from TV shows that have aired into videos without getting the video blocked or taken down because of copyright, everyone's favorite thing. So once I'm generally grounded and I think I know the direction of where I want to go and I have anywhere from 10 to 12 tabs open, I open a Google Doc, and then I just start typing. For some reason, I've always typed my scripts in Times New Roman 14 size font. Then I write a brief introduction about what the video is going to be about, preface, you know, potentially why the record didn't do well, if that's the type of video I'm making, and then I do my whole spiel about subscribing, becoming a channel member, and then I get right into it, basically. A lot of what I always uh, do say, I make sure to keep it uh, factual. And as I said before, I do make errors and I do get things wrong. Unfortunately, I'm only human. But most of what I'm saying is always referencing something that I have seen in an interview that I've read or I've watched or a quote by the artist themselves. I also do take into account other people's perspectives as well, because it's not all the time you can really cite what an artist has specifically said about their album or their music or their tour. So reviews definitely come in handy, and so do other people's pieces that um, they've written about this work or this artist. And those are usually always included as um, screenshots in my videos. One thing that's always hard is trying to figure out what to exactly include in the video, because you want to get to the point and you want to back up the claim that you're making. Because at the end of the day, a lot of what I'm saying is you know, subject to debate. It's not necessarily factual when you think about it. You can say that an album underperformed or that it was really successful, but someone else can absolutely refute that. And that's like the primary reason I do look at reviews and what other and other pieces people have made about this artist or their album. So once I got my script down, usually they're anywhere from five to six pages when fully typed out, including my intro and my outro where I thank everyone for watching. And then I just record. I get this question a lot, but I use Adobe Premiere Pro to edit all my videos and I use Adobe Photoshop to make thumbnails that I post um, across my social medias. It's honestly not complex. I don't know how to do really intricate editing that's really flashy. That's something hopefully I can learn more about and improve. So I'm probably going to be taking time to learn how to do things a bit more interesting, maybe throw videos back in there because back in the day I would use concert footage among other things. And why my videos kind of look the way they do now is because I'm doing everything not to get um, a copyright claim or a copyright strike because that can literally result in my channel um, being taken down and having videos blocked and not viewable. And it's a whole mess that I don't really want to have to deal with going forward. Editing a video itself is probably the most time-consuming process because I'm screenshotting interviews, I am pulling chart information, I'm saving a ton of photos. On average, I have about 120 to 150 what I call assets in every single video. So that's text you see on screen, that's the background, that's um, the subscribe notification thing that pops up, the little thumbs up for a like, all photos, videos, all of that stuff. And I do my best whenever I'm talking about a specific quote or something, 
you know, a relevant piece of information to show on screen exactly what I'm talking about. It doesn't always line up. Sometimes it comes after, but I always try to do that just so it makes sense. And I know that they're not up there for a long time because I don't think anyone wants to stare at a three sentence, you know, quote for 30 seconds or whatever. So it does move pretty fast. Every picture that you see on screen is there for about five seconds before it dissolves into the next thing. The process of editing can take really long or it can be done really quickly. On average, I would say it takes about anywhere from three to five hours to put those videos together, which at the end of the day isn't that long, but when you're doing it in one sitting, you know, it can feel really, really long. But you know, I have a streamlined process. Usually I try my best to pull as many of the quotes and pictures that I want to use before I get into editing so I can just get them from my desktop or wherever and throw them in there. So after like it's fully put together, I go back through the video and make sure there's no errors. I cut out, you know, my pauses and my breaks. I mean, if y'all heard <laughs> the audio I record and it wasn't edited at all, I would be coughing. I would be pausing and going, wait, wait, what, what did I just say? Because I'm reading from a script. I literally have my computer with me and I'm reading what I've typed. And sometimes I'm just talking and I don't register what I'm actually saying. And I'm like, wait what did I just read? What did I just say? And I don't even like catch myself and I have to go back and redo it. Usually these recordings are 10 to 15, sometimes even 20 minutes when they're not edited. And then after they're trimmed down they're they fall within their nine to 14 minute time range. And then after that, I just export the video and then I upload it to YouTube. One of my least favorite parts of the process, and I don't know why, is doing the description that's underneath every single video. You know, every video on YouTube has a description box. But that part to me, for some reason, just seems so tedious, and I'm not entirely sure why. But I would definitely say it is a huge time commitment. It takes a lot of time, especially because you're sitting down staring at a screen for so long. You know, you're eyes get tired. My hand sometimes cramps up because, you know, I'm typing away or I'm in Adobe Premiere moving clips around and changing their size and all that stuff. That's another thing that, like, I always try to do. I never want images to be, like, just totally different sizes when, you know, fading into another one. So I try to make sure, you know, they kind of are similar because, you know, you have rectangle photos, you have square photos, you have giant ones, smaller ones. I mean, it's, it's all... The scaling probably takes the most time when um, I'm editing a video. And one thing that has been brought up recently is the audio levels. That's something I'm still tinkering with because for me, I can hear it. It sounds fine. I'm playing it out of my computer speakers, but I want to make sure that everyone can hear it and they don't have to, you know, blow up their computer by jacking the volume up all the way. I also have my background music that I've had for over a year, probably a year and a half. It's been in nearly all my videos. I never really have to adjust the audio for that, I just have to, um, I just have to either like extend it so it's the music plays longer or so it's shorter. But yeah, that's really my uh, process when it comes to creating videos. I'm not sure if this is the most interesting thing to hear, but um, I know people have asked before. I've seen the comments, "What software do you use?" I've gotten people in my DMs ask, you know, "Hey, how do you make your videos?" You know, I want to make videos like this. So I thought I'd just share this with everyone so you kind of understand the process. If there's one thing I've learned about having a YouTube channel and making videos, it is the time commitment itself because if you're not going to put in the time, it's not going to happen. It is a lot of sitting, a lot of typing, and just staring at a screen. But at the end of the day, despite that, I always try to feel proud of the work that I put out. I know that I'm working hard. Um, and I always get a lot of appreciation and thanks from those who watch. So it always makes me feel good that you know, I've done something right and I am doing it right. So yeah, I think that concludes this episode. I apologize if this wasn't that interesting to anyone, but I just thought I'd let you in on a little uh, behind the scenes, so to speak. Thank you so much for listening.